hello children i hope you read the lesson so let us move forward with our discussion and before we do that let us do a quick summary what we learned uh, earlier okay so we learned that vasco da gama discovered a new sea route to india he traveled around africa to reach india and soon this route became so popular that other european started using that and then after portuguese dutch people the britishers and finally the french traders started coming to india for trade and there was intense competition among all these people and uh, so the east india company was given a, a charter by queen elizabeth the first on the 31st of december 1600 and as per this charter a charter only the east india company could trade with india other companies in england could not do any trade with india so only east india company was allowed okay and then uh, what they did was they set up a factory on the banks of river hugli in 1651 and by 1696 they began building a fort around this place it was known as fort william okay so this is what we discussed in the previous class so what happened was see how the company was gradually progressing initially they were only traders they had no place later they acquired a small place and they built a factory initially they built a factory then they built a they, then they built a fort now in the year 1698 see look at the previous uh, slide so in 1696 they began building a fort and just 2 years later in the year 1698 they acquired zamindari rights what does it mean so zamindari rights means the right to collect tax so what they did was they got these zamindari rights over three villages just three villages the name names are kalikata sutanuti and gobindapur okay Ulti later on they became these three villages became the present day kolkata okay so you can see how we got the name kolkata so three there were only three villages small small villages kalikata sutanuti and gobindapur so the company got zamindari rights that means they were allowed to collect tax because why 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 do they need to do that see these people were bringing things from in fact they were actually buying things from india so how would they buy just imagine their money has no value in india who will take their money after all they were not uh, selling anything so they had to exchange gold for getting our indian goods everything they bought in india they bought by giving gold to our people so it was quite expensive thing right so what they thought is that if they can get some money locally they could actually save some gold so they somehow persuaded the rulers uh, the, maybe they uh, gave some incentives to the rulers there but they got the zamindari rights that means the right to collect tax which they could use for various purposes for for example for giving salaries for uh, buying certain things from the indian people okay so they got zamindari rights over these three places kalikata sutanuti and gobindapur okay and then they got a farman from emperor aurangzeb so at the time the emperor of india was aurangzeb he was very powerful so they re they went to him they pleaded with him and he gave them a farman a farman is again a government order so uh, this is uh, a persian word farman farman means a special you know royal edict or a government order in in our present day language it's a government order so he gave the company the right to trade duty duty free what does it mean so aurangzeb allowed them okay you can buy whatever you want without paying any tax okay uh, so he gave the company the right to trade without paying duty means actually tax so he gave them the right to do 
trade without paying any tax to the government okay uh, so what happened what happened next uh, aurangzeb as i told you he was the last powerful emperor mughal emperor many people when when we ask who was the last mughal emperor many people say that it was aurangzeb no there were many rulers after aurangzeb also but aurangzeb was the last of the great mughal emperors there many people came after aurangzeb but we don't bother much because they were not powerful they could not control the entire india they were like puppets okay so we don't bother much we don't even bother to remember their names so what happened by the at the end of the rule of aurangzeb was there were powerful nawabs actually governors so aurangzeb appointed various governors uh, to different provinces like bengal and deccan we studied that in in our 7th uh, uh, class history so these became very powerful and started ruling independently we have discussed all these things in our earlier uh, uh, class you may go through the lesson one more time so in bengal there were nawabs in deccan there were nawabs okay and they became very powerful they became very powerful and although they acknowledged the emperor mughal emperor as their emperor all the power was actually in the hands of the local nawabs okay uh, so after his death after the death of aurangzeb in the year 1707 the these nawabs mostly became independent although there was some emperor in in delhi uh, he was like a, a, you know a rubber stamp so most of the power was in the hands of these nawabs okay and let us see what happened in bengal so bengal was ruled by murshid kuli khan so later on in bengal a person by name murshid kuli khan became the nawab okay and there was conflict between this nawab and the east india company why why should there be a conflict so the emperor aurangzeb gave them a farman a per, you can say permission or order government order to do trade without paying taxes so so far so good but what happened was these officials of the company other people in the company they started abusing this farman how the permission was given to the east india company not to the individual people but these individual people the officials and other people important people in the company they started trading they started trading personally and they did not pay any taxes to the nawab and they showed the farman issued by the uh, by the emperor aurangzeb so naturally the nawabs were angry why was the nawab angry because he is not getting tax that was due to him and uh, they are doing huge trade but he was not getting a single uh, paisa out of that naturally he got angry okay and what happened next see this is the uh, this is a picture of murshid kuli khan remember all these are paintings there was no photography so whenever i show pictures most of the pictures i show you are photographs drawn by artists so this was murshid kuli khan he was a powerful uh, ruler okay and he was followed by ali waddi khan okay and he ruled between 1740 and 56 so let us go back so nawab of uh, murshid kuli khan was nawab of bengal between 1717 and 1727 so he ruled for uh, 10 years and he was followed by uh, there is a gap maybe there are some some more rulers in between uh, maybe not important so we have ali waddi khan who ruled between 1740 and 56 he was the next important ruler he was also very powerful and he was succeeded by sirajuddaula he was a young man actually when he ascended power he was a very young man in his 20s and he ruled for just one year 1756 to 1757 by the time this young man became the nawab of bengal the conflict between east india company and the nawabs reached its peak earlier it was only a small company nobody bothered gradually they became powerful they built a factory then they built a fort then they acquired zamindari rights over three villages do you see the progression 
initially they were only traders then they built a factory then a fort then they acquired zamindari rights over three, three villages and then they obtained farman from the emperor mogul emperor aurangzeb to do trade without paying any taxes so who, who are affected most obviously the nawabs of bengal because they were not getting any revenue from the east india company and moreover they were actually misusing the farman these company officials were doing private trade and they were not paying any taxes to the nawab he was angry so so what happens gradually when well, the conflict became uh, intensified let us see what happened so this i already told you murshid kuli khan was followed by ali waddi khan and then sirajuddaula so sirajuddaula became the nawab of bengal in 1756 so what happened i told you uh, the, the relation between the relations between sirajuddaula and company worsened they became very bad from initially they were bad then they were worse and then they reached they became worst okay so he was angry uh, angry with the britishers and what he did was uh, this uh, sirajuddaula he brought his army he captured english factory at kasim bazar so the english established factory not just in one place so they, they established factories in other places also so what sirajuddaula did was he captured the factory at kasim bazar and he locked the warehouse where they kept all their goods and he disarmed all the englishmen he took them into custody of course the the nawab was very powerful at that time and the east india company was only a small company and with very few people so he captured he overpowered the east india company in uh, uh, in kasim bazar and then what he did was he marched to calcutta that is the, the place where uh, their headquarters were located we already told you the three villages later on became calcutta then we gave we changed the name to kolkata initially it was kalikata uh, we have seen the names also govindapur and sutnauti so these villages gradually became present day kolkata so he marched to calcutta and captured the company's fort there who sirajuddaula and what did the company do see the company established headquarters not only in bengal but they had power they acquired power in madras also in south india also they have acquired some places and they have actually uh, They, they had some forts and they had some army also the company had some army and some important officials in madras so the word reached the people in madras so what did the east india company do they appointed clive as as the general they said okay please go there and do something about what is happening in calcutta so our our factory our forts were all captured by the nawab of bengal please do something either you negotiate with him or you fight with him but you should get our possessions back so that was the instruction given to given to robert clive okay so this is a picture of robert clive okay so he came to india as a young man and uh, he acquired lot of wealth eventually okay so what did clive do clive was very you know intelligent and cunning also so in 1757 so what he did was he bribed the general of military general of the nawab so at that time the nawab's army was led by mir jafar so mir jafar was the commander of the army of the nawab so what robert clive did was he bribed him he told him okay if you surrender if you surrender your army to us then i'll help you become the nawab of bengal so mir jafar was tempted by the offer given by robert clive and he didn't fight at all so he simply surrendered and in this battle in fact it was a small it is not even a big war or anything it was a small skirmish skirmish means like a street fight so although the, the nawab had army and people because of the uh, because of the act of his general 
his uh, the, the nawab sirajuddaula lost this battle so this was the first battle won by the british first major battle in fact there were some more battles but this battle of plassey has a very special place in in indian history so from this battle onwards britishers became powerful in india and what happened next naturally after this battle sirajuddaula was assassinated assassinated means he was killed and he was replaced by mir jafar so we see this kind of stories in uh, uh, many movies also like bahubali so sirajuddaula was replaced by mir jafar so in a way the britishers have become king makers okay so now they have a puppet king puppet king means the, you know puppet puppet is controlled by somebody so now this mir jafar although he was officially the nawab of bengal he was controlled by the british okay so let us see what happened so mir jafar found it difficult to be a puppet king so he understood what it means to be a puppet he is nawab only for name sake but everything was controlled by the british how could he, how how could uh, how could he enjoy the power so so he protested he said no this the, i won't accept this uh, this kind of domination so what did the british do they replaced him and placed mir qasim in his place okay so sirajuddaula was assassinated he was replaced by mir jafar now mir jafar is replaced by mir qasim another puppet so again mir qasim faced the same difficulty so uh, he had to take responsibility for everything that was happening in his king kingdom but he had no real power he had to take blame for anything that went wrong but he has no real power he had to give lot of money to the the east india company and its officials so he found it to be very difficult to sit on the throne so he again protested with the british so he was defeated by the british at the battle of baksar this is another important battle this is a bigger battle compared to battle of plassey in the year 1764 and now he is replaced by again mir ja uh, mir jafar so you can see that uh, the britishers or the east india company they were placing whoever was in their favor on the throne of bengal so all these people so mir jafar mir qasim they were only puppets in the hands of east india company so mir jafar again became the nawab of bengal and in the year 1765 something interesting happened the mughal emperor appointed the company as the diwan of the provinces of bengal now the company itself became the nawab of bengal so what is meant by diwan we have uh, heard the word in our uh, in our previous uh, class so diwan means the right to collect tax see earlier they got zamindari rights over three villages now they became the diwan of bengal now they could collect taxes from the entire bengal and east india company became officially the official uh, the uh, officials of east india company became the nawabs of bengal and uh, with this diwani with this right to collect taxes uh, they had much more control over the people of people of bengal now because they are getting so much money they could use this money to buy things from indian people but they need not spend valuable gold to buy our uh, our products instead they could just use the money they collected in the form of taxes to buy things from people and they could send these things to england and europe where they sold them for huge price okay so what happened next we'll see in the next class thank you